What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on Yahoo with a 12-team half-point PPR mock where we'll be selecting from that fourth overall position. As you can see, we've got the setup all ready to go. And while we wait for our pick, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, let us hear it in the comment section. Agree, disagree, any other questions you guys might have, this is the place to ask them. And lastly, check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. And while you're there, get yourself a copy of the 2021 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Everything you could want at a great value. Details in the description. But with that being said, let's get into this thing because we are on the clock. And we've got a pretty easy choice here, in my opinion. That is one Alvin Kamara at the 104. And I'll quickly pull up the draft results here that... Uh, took place when we were getting into this. So obviously, first overall, Christian McCaffrey followed by Dalvin Cook. Nothing too crazy there. Then Derek Henry, uh, which resulted in Alvin Kamara falling to us. Personally, now with Michael Thomas facing a multi-week absence, I'd have Alvin Kamara as a top three pick ahead of one Derek Henry. So I feel pretty good about getting Kamara at the four spot to me. That's very, very good value. Uh, then you see Ezekiel Elliott goes fifth overall. So this is pretty, I would say, to be expected in terms of how your first five picks could play out. You know, maybe, maybe we could see a Saquon Barkley making his way to the fifth pick overall if his health continues to trend in the right direction. Obviously, if him get, getting taken off the pup list now, I doubt you're going to see him drop towards the end of the first round, outside of the first round. And in fact, here, you see him go as the sixth pick overall. And then first pass catcher off the board, Travis Kelsey at the 107. Again, there's still some running backs here, like an Aaron Jones, like an Austin Eckler, that I would be taking ahead of a Travis Kelsey. How I'd even take a wide receiver ahead of Travis Kelsey, because I really do think somebody like a Darren Waller, somebody like a TJ Hawkinson, George Kittle, who you can get multiple rounds after this, are going to be not that far behind Travis Kelsey. While here in the first round, if you really want a pass catcher, you can get a Tyree Kill, you can get a Devontae Adams or a Stefan Diggs. So that's the way I would approach that situation. But take note here, the first six picks all running backs, that is the way it should be. There's scarcity at this position and running back is king. I say this every single time. Running back is king. You need to understand that. And there's going to be run at the position. So be prepared that in the first two rounds to select at least one running back. Because if you don't, you're going to be behind the eight ball in a major, major way. And we'll see how it plays out here. You know, we've got a good potentially test subject, Team 12, going wide receiver, wide receiver. And don't get me wrong, there's good value in that because you're getting arguably two out of the top three wide receivers. But again, as long as it, uh, Austin Eckler and Antonio Gibson are still on the board, I'd look their way, maybe even a Joe Mixon. Uh, but, you know, breaking it down a little bit further, a guy that I think is still going way too early, Jonathan Taylor, goes with the 10th pick in the first round. With Carson Wentz out, with the offensive line not being at 100%, I would rather have Aaron Jones above him 10 times out of 10, Austin Eckler above him, so even Antonio Gibson above him. I just don't feel about, good about that situation right now. Other than that, in the first round, you saw Nick Chubb, you saw Aaron Jones. Again, I'd have Aaron Jones above Nick Chubb as well. Again, keep in mind, this is half-point PPR scoring, and... Other than that, in the second round, you saw Stephon Diggs being the first uh, wide uh, first wide receiver taken in the second round. Makes sense. Then Austin Eckler, Najee Harris, way, way too early again, in my opinion, for Najee Harris. But let's quickly take a look at this thing because we are back on the clock and we've seen some pretty good selections. I was hoping we could get one of these guys to potentially fall to us. But right now, the way I'm looking at this, I'm hoping maybe Chris Carson falls to us in the third round. Here, I can take a wide receiver like an A.J. Brown. I could also go the way of Clyde edwards alaire but I'll just go wide receiver. I'll go A.J. Brown. I feel really good about having Alvin Kamara already. And I do think A.J. Brown is going to be the top wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. Yes, even with Julio Jones there. I'm a little bit more worried about Julio Jones's injury history compared to that of A.J. Brown. So uh, I like A.J. Brown. But quickly going through the second round, you saw 
after Najee Harris, who again, too early in my opinion, DeAndre Hopkins, DK Metcalf, probably one of the earlier points I've seen DK Metcalf go. I'd rather have Calvin Ridley above him. Uh, then you see Antonio Gibson. I was secretly hoping Gibson might fall to us. Joe Mixon also uh, after the Calvin Ridley selection definitely would have been up for consideration for me in the second round, but I decided to go wide receiver instead. And I think that'll pay dividends because right now, you know, looking at the players that are still available, we can even sort it by running back. You know, my top choice right now would be a Chris Carson. I'm hoping that he falls to us. David Montgomery just went. Keenan Allen was also selected before that. I was going to say, I have a very, very tough choice to make if Keenan Allen was available because I love, I love Keenan Allen as a top 10, like slam dunk, super safe wide receiver in PPR. I think he's undervalued like every single season, but instead I'll take my other favorite third round selection. That is Chris Carson of the Seattle Seahawks. I really like that combo, Kamara Carson. So the gamble kind of pays off, I would say, because if we had taken Carson in the second round, I doubt AJ Brown would have been there. Looking at the other wide receivers, I feel much better about A.J. Brown compared to if we had to go with a C.D. Lamb or an Allen Robinson or a Terry McLaurin. So I would say all things considered right now, these first three rounds have gone very, very well for us. If we took any risks, they have paid off. Uh, But after our A.J. Brown selection, again, Justin Jefferson, he was also up for consideration as my wide receiver one. Then Darren Waller with a second to last pick. So again, uh, just an example there. Darren Waller goes almost a full uh, round after Travis Kelsey. So, you know, to me, that's better value than Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who, again, was also up for consideration if we hadn't taken A.J. Brown, J.K. Dobbins, Keenan Allen, somebody that I really like. So basically, like in this range, because I knew we were rather close together in terms of between our second and third round selection, I had, call it, you know, four guys in play, A.J. Brown, Keenan Allen, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and, you know, probably... Justin Jefferson slash Chris Carson. And we were able to get, you know, two of those guys. So I'm very, very happy with the way it worked out. You know, other guys in the third round, David Montgomery goes before Chris Carson. I feel very, very lucky that we got Chris Carson. To me, he has a lot less question marks David than David Montgomery. So I like that situation. Then after a Chris Carson pick, Allen Robinson, Terry McLaurin. So a little bit of a run on wide receivers. Patrick Mahomes goes here in the middle of the third round too early again you know you're gonna see Patrick Mahomes go earlier than this so you might call this him being here this late a great value but I'd rather get again I'd rather get a Lamar or a Kyler Murray around a round and a half maybe even two later I don't think the fall off is all that much George Kittle then in the third round followed by a run on wide receiver CeeDee Lamb Chris Godwin Mike Evans and then finally Daryl Henderson there Uh, with the last pick in the third round. He was probably the best, the highest upside running back still left. DeAndre Swift is tempting, but, you know, right now reports are that he is dealing with a groin injury. He's missed an extensive amount of practice, and that's obviously not a good thing. Kind of gets you worried a little bit, especially with Jamal Williams there. So might be fading DeAndre Swift a little bit at this point in time. Other players that have started to go in the fourth round, Cooper Cup ahead of Robert Woods. It's only by one pick, so it doesn't really matter. But I like to see Cooper Cup and Robert Woods close together like this. That is the way it should be. Uh, Then goes Josh Allen in the fourth round. So I'm not the biggest Josh Allen believer this year, and not because, you know, I don't think he'll be great, but because I don't see him finishing as like the QB1 again. I think there's going to be some recency bias. People are going to view him as potentially you know, the second best overall quarterback since he finished number one at the position last year. Uh, But I think Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson would potentially be better values. There's a little bit of a run on quarterbacks here. So you can make the case that I should go Kyler Murray and I wouldn't be opposed to it, but let's see what happens here. You know, Tyler Lockett just went, Amari Cooper just go. So we're on the clock. See if there's any very, very good values here. And one of my guys, TJ Hawkinson, is still there. You know, this is one of those examples I was talking about. Potentially getting TJ Hawkinson around and a half, two later, probably three actually, than T- than uh, Travis Kelsey, I think is a very, very good value. This is the way that I'm going. Uh, I think it's huge to have a positional advantage at the tight end position. And you see Kyle Pitts being drafted immediately afterwards. 
So probably wouldn't have had TJ Hawkinson fall to me in the fifth round. Now, I doubt Kyler Murray will fall to me there, but if he does, that would probably be the perfect combination. Uh, I don't think going tight end of the fourth round, end of the fourth round is, you know, necessarily a reach, especially with a guy again in TJ Hawkinson that I feel much, much better about than even a George Kittle or a Kyle Pitts. I think Hawkinson is going to see a crazy, crazy amount of targets. And I knew that if I waited until the fifth round, which is where I usually pick TJ Hawkinson, uh, he probably wouldn't be there for me. So not too worried about the situation here. There goes Russell Wilson. So I don't know how Russell Wilson just went ahead of Kyler Murray, unless I missed Kyler Murray still being on the board. But no, he's right there. Let's see if there's any other crazy, crazy good values. Julio Jones is there, but I've already got AJ Brown. Miles Sanders, I'm not the biggest believer in right now. Uh, So to me, this is Kyler Murray. You know, I could go with the second wide receiver. I do need one. But I think getting, again, Kyler Murray at this point in time is a very, very good value pick. And wide receiver is so, so deep that, you know, even if I wait around later, I think it's going to have a bigger drop off than, you know, potentially getting a Kyler Murray who I have as my number two overall quarterback. So I feel good about the situation. Uh, We were able to pretty much get our, honestly, dream start to this draft. Every single round that we have gone through right now, we have had our guy fall to us. If this was my draft come September, I would be absolutely ecstatic. This is on the verge of an A draft right now. Kamara, Carson, I know I'm going to be able to get some pretty good value at the running back position later rounds. So I'm happy about that. I got my guy at tight end, Hawkinson. I got a great quarterback in Kyler Murray in the fifth round. I was, hell, I was considering him in the fourth round, so just keep that in mind. Uh, But other picks in this fifth round, Mark Andrews, Adam Thielen, good value on Thielen, Russell Wilson. I don't know how Russell Wilson went before Kyler Murray. That makes zero sense to me. Miles Gaskin after our Kyler Murray selection, probably pretty good value there. Julio Jones, tremendous, tremendous value in the middle of the fifth round. That is probably going to be the biggest steal in this draft. Then you see Miles Sanders, Ronald Jones. This is probably the earliest I've seen Ronald Jones go, but... You know, I understand the upside. I understand the uh, potential, you know, great offense, which it will be again, and that he is the number one running back for the Bucks. But I'd rather go with a Dion or go with a Mike Davis. Um, I think he's got an easier path toward uh, more volume, so and more consistent volume, which is pretty important. Uh, But afterwards, you see Aaron Rodgers. Deontay Johnson is a guy that if Kyler Murray wasn't there, Deontay Johnson would have been my pick. No questions about it. Uh, Now you see here Brendan Ayuk afterwards, and you see this last team that I showed you as an example of. They go wide receiver heavy, how they're going to have to combat that running back position. I don't think they've done a good job of it. Daryl Henderson is your RB1. He's not going to be a tit-for-tat Cam Akers replacement. And then Travis Etienne as your second running back. I get that this is PPR, but you know I'd rather have James Robinson over ETN. I think it's going to take ETN a while to become potentially the guy there if he ever does become the guy because James Robinson is a very, very reliable uh, running back. All of a sudden, you've got a run on quarterbacks here. Tom Brady in the sixth round. I think that's pretty early. Mike Davis goes in the sixth round, so unfortunately, we won't be able to get him uh, towards the end of the sixth round. I think that would have been very, very good value. But let's look at the wide receiver position here. I also really do like Damian Harris. I really like T. Higgins if one of those guys falls to us. But let's sort it out by wide receiver. You see, again, the two Cincinnati Bengals that I mentioned. You see somebody like a, you know, Cortland Sutton, somebody like a Chase Claypool. Brendan Cooks could be very, very tempting. Damian Harris just goes. So all things considered, I think we'll be in a good spot Here, if we can get T. Higgins as our second wide receiver, I think that's pretty solid. You know, even if it's Jamar Chase, I think that would be a good spot to be in. Antonio Brown, I also really, really like. So, you know, this is this is a pretty decent spot to be in. I think AJ Brown can kind of carry the wide receiver position for the most part. Uh, I think we've got arguably a wide receiver at the tight end position with the amount of volume TJ Hawkinson will get. We've got great quarterback play with Kyler Murray. You know, if potentially you want to nitpick one thing that I could have done differently instead of taking Kyler Murray in the fifth, going somebody like a Deontay Johnson and then 
uh, instead of Kyler Murray, you know, getting somebody like a, let's see here, getting somebody like a Justin Herbert would have been a great choice, getting somebody like a Matthew Stafford. So a lot of options, definitely a lot of options, but uh, that's the way we went. So T Higgins does drop to us. I think he's being incredibly uh, undervalued. So to me, this is a no brainer of a pick. T Higgins is our second wide receiver. I absolutely love that. And then we'll see what happens here. We still need to address the flex position, but I'm not too worried about it. I still think there's actually some probably pretty decent running backs. Let's see uh, what's available for us. Melvin Gordon, I, I get it. He's not a sexy name, but I don't think Javante Williams should be ranked above him. You know, Melvin Gordon is still going to start out as the RB1. So keep that in mind. And, you know, it's probably going to be like a 60-40 type of split situation. So I love Javante Williams, but I just don't love the landing spot for him. Uh, after our T Higgins pick, you see Kenny Galladay, Justin Herbert. So there goes Justin Herbert, probably pretty good value on Justin Herbert. And again, the only thing that I would have done potentially differently so far, swapping Deontay Johnson instead of Kyler Murray. Uh, and then we could have gotten a Justin Herbert in the sixth round or a Matthew Stafford afterwards. But, you know, I think we're in a very, very good situation. Again, uh, we'll get a pretty good flex here. If we can get Antonio Brown or Brandon Cooks as our flex, I would be very, very happy. I think that that's, you know, probably the best case scenario because other teams here are probably going to be going quarterback, um, you know, things like that. So uh, we're in a good spot to get one of these guys at wide receiver. And let's look at it again here. Uh, right now, the way I would rank my top choices, I would go Antonio Brown followed by Brandon Cooks followed by... Maybe like a Marvin Jones. Yeah. Um, Claypool is also up there. He's got high touchdown upside for the Steelers. I think he's going to be the second best option for Pittsburgh. You know, it's probably going to be him and then Deontay Johnson. I think Juju Smith Schuster is going to be probably a distant third. But hey, uh, we get another uh, kind of dream pick here, I would say. I'm going Antonio Brown with the. Uh, with our next pick here in the seventh round, I'm perfectly fine taking Antonio Brown in the seventh round. I don't think it's a reach. I think, again, I continue to say this, wherever Mike Evans and Chris Godwin go, and i.e. that was in the end of the third round here, Antonio Brown, you could make the case, should be going right there as well, that trio of wide receivers. There's nothing you can say that is going to convince me that they don't all have the same upside. Okay, Mike Evans has a higher touchdown upside, but guess what? Godwin and Antonio Brown have, have a higher reception upside. So it kind of balances itself out, especially in PPR scoring, which this, again, is the case. I like the big play ability for Antonio Brown. And yeah, in PPR scoring, I honestly rather have Antonio Brown over Mike Evans. He's not going to be a big volume guy, in my opinion. So there is that. And he could very well see touchdown regression. Keep all those things in mind. Uh, in the seventh round, you see a kind of a run on quarterbacks after our Antonio Brown selection, Ryan Tannehill, Matthew Stafford. So, you know, again, a, a good example of why you can wait at the quarterback position. Yes, in this example, we went Kyler Murray in the fifth round, which is probably, you know, all things considered a bit early. But if we had waited until the seventh round, some really, really still great value. Matthew Stafford, Ryan Tannehill, I believe Joe Burrow is still on the board. So a great example, in my opinion, of why waiting at the quarterback position can absolutely pay off. But after that, you see Cortland Sutton, Robbie Anderson, Chase Claypool. So a couple of those wide receivers that at this point had become good value picks kind of dropped uh, are selected. And let's quickly run through our roster here because I think it's a very balanced roster. And I think arguably you have got guys almost at every single position that have either a top five finish or, you know, can be the top scorer at their position. So Kyler Murray, I mean, I think he's the most balanced rushing and passing quarterback in the NFL. Yes, you know, Lamar Jackson probably is going to get a thousand yards rushing on the ground, but Kyler Murray's ceiling for passing yards, it's much higher. So I really like that. Uh, then A.J. Brown. I mean, the guy was an absolute breakout last season. I think with Julio Jones there, uh, he's going to benefit from that. So I like him as a top 10 wide receiver, even, you know, as a borderline top five guy. Uh, then T. Higgins, who I think is honestly being slept on. I think he's going to be, uh, if not the 1A wide receiver, the 1B wide receiver uh, to Jamar Chase. So I really like that upside. I think he's got a nice touchdown upside as well. And then running back, man, Alvin Kamara, you could argue being like, the top pick overall, especially if Jameis Winston is the guy that wins out that starting job. Chris Carson, I think we got pretty good value on in the third round. 
a guy that's quietly like a top 10, top 12 type of running back talent. TJ Hawkinson, maybe we reached on a little bit, but he's a guy that I strongly, strongly believe in. And then uh, finally, Antonio Brown. Look, people are going to say, oh, Antonio Brown has passed his prime. You know, Antonio Brown uh, was a reach. The guy's the third wide receiver on the Bucks. I'm telling you guys, he's a wide receiver too, just like every single other Bucks wide receiver. I feel very, very good about having him as my flex guy. And right now, let's quickly scroll down here because I believe unless, you know, he's gone while we've been breaking this down, Brennan Cooks is still available. And if we can get Brennan Cooks as our bench piece right now, when we were considering him a full round earlier, then that is a huge, huge win. And that will be the case because, you know, for some reason, nobody has taken a chance on him. I think you could argue he was, uh, after Antonio Brown, the top wide receiver that could have been picked. Uh, Cortland Sutton, Robbie Anderson, Chase Claypool, Michael Thomas, Jerry Judy. Like Michael Thomas, when's he going to play again? That's that's the question here that we don't really know. Uh, sure, you know, he when he's on the field, he's a wide receiver one, but when will that be? So too much uncertainty there with him. Uh, Cortland Sutton, who's the quarterback throwing on the football? Robbie Anderson, too many targets um, in Carolina, especially with Christian McCaffrey uh, back now and Marshall also being drafted. Chase Claypool, no, I don't, I don't mind him, but I think Brennan Cooks is going to have a higher, probably, reception total. Uh, and then Jerry Judy, same situation with Cortland Sutton. So uh, we've gotten to the point where we're seeing a couple defenses being selected via some auto picks. So I don't necessarily love that, but, you know, uh, we're still going through our strategy, to still taking uh, good players. And I don't think we've seen anything too crazy at this point. So I think this is, honestly, all things considered, a pretty realistic draft. Let's see. If there's some other very good values still left on the board, a wide receiver, I pointed it out. Somebody like a Marvin Jones is still available, even Darnell Mooney. So a lot of options. Let's see what's going on at running back. Melvin Gordon is still somehow on the board. If Melvin Gordon uh, isn't selected here with one of these next few picks, he will absolutely be my selection. Uh, let's see what happens, though. I could see this auto pick going in that direction, definitely because Melvin Gordon is by far and away, in my opinion, the next best available player. And having him as a backup, you know, on my team when I already have Carson and Kamara, I feel very, very good about that. Other options, if we don't get, you know, Melvin Gordon, I mentioned it before, Marvin Jones. I think he'd be a very solid choice, but, you know, no, we got a kicker being selected instead beforehand. So Melvin Gordon is the no-brainer pick here. I feel pretty, pretty good about that. And we'll probably wrap it up with this. Uh, we've filled out our entire starting roster. We've got two bench spots taken care of as well. And, you know, no point in seeing kickers or defenses being drafted here uh, by auto pick. So uh, again, breaking down this roster, I feel very, very good about it. Uh, you could have argued we had kind of a weakness at the wide receiver position after A.J. Brown, but I think we did a very good job of getting some very good wide receivers afterwards with Higgins, with Antonio Brown, with Brennan Cooks. So all of a sudden, we got pretty good depth at that position. I think we did a good job. I'm going to call this, honestly, an A-minus roster. I think it could be A-worthy as well. Um, you know, the bench pieces probably at this point in time are going to be the deciding factor, how good value you get on those guys. So that's uh, that would be my kind of deciding factor here. But otherwise, I love the value we got at every single round. Honestly, probably wouldn't do anything differently. And we were able to get our quote unquote perfect choice at every single pick. But hey, let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? I'll do my best to answer them all in the comments section. And lastly, again, check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. And while you're there, get yourself a copy of the 2021 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Those details in the description. But with that being said, we'll see you guys in future videos.